we find that the international media they are bombarding misinformation about islam we find that there are various misconceptions about islam that are spread on this international media and we find the international news channels they are mentioning war on terror or some of the international news channels they are saying war for peace actually what they are doing is not war for peace war on peace in other words war on the region of peace on islam the international media as a whole today we find that they are projecting islam as though it is a religion of terror it's a religion which does not want peace to prevail and unfortunately we muslims unfortunately we aren't really replying to this international media and there are various techniques that are used by this international media to project islam in a wrong way the first strategy used by the media to malign islam is many a times they pick up the black sheep amongst the muslim community and they portray as though they are exemplary muslims indicating that islam is a religion which encourages these wrong things we have to agree that there are black sheep in our community there are some muslims who do illegal activity they pick up these selected muslims and they portray on the media as though they exemplary muslims giving a picture to the world that islam is a religion which encourages these illegal activities these activities which are against humanity and all of us know today that the international media says that the islamic madrasas should be banned why because they produce human beings who cause terror who disrupt the peace of this world alhamdulillah i know thousands of people human beings who have passed from islamic madrasas i don't know a single who encourages and propagates the disruption of peace that does not mean that there will not be any muslims who have passed from madrasa who may be propagating wrong things there may be a few surely it will be less than 1% but the media portrays these muslims as though they are exemplary muslims and as though a person who passes from madrasa is an exemplary student who disrupts peace in this world history tells us today that the human being that has killed the maximum number of human beings in this world who is he who is the man who has killed the maximum human beings in this world who is that person who is he hitler you don't get award for that it is common knowledge hitler which madrasa did hitler pass from from which madrasa did hitler graduate and you go down history we know misoloni he has killed thousands of human beings which madrasa did he pass from we know today that the mafia the top drug dealers in the world which madrasa did they pass from you take a list of all the top criminals in the world not what the media portrays actually if you have proof what they have done is wrong i'm not bothered what the media portrays who is terrorist number 1 etc without any proof but those who have been imprisoned those who have been proved to be causing this harmony in this world if you check the background you will not even find 1% 0.1% of them who have passed from madrasa they have passed from these universities the one that even i have passed from fortunately unfortunately 
even I have passed from the normal formal education system. I've passed from Bombay. After doing my schooling, I've passed from medical college. Same, like a normal doctor. So this is how the media picks up black sheep of the community and portray as though they're exemplary Muslims. If a person wants to judge Islam, he should not judge Islam based on what individual Muslims do or what the Muslim society does. If you want to judge about the religion of Islam, you have to judge according to the authentic sources. And the authentic sources of Islam are the glorious Quran and the authentic say hadith of the last and final prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And I challenge anyone, any human being to point out a single teaching from the Quran or the Sahih Hadith which is against humanity as a whole. Imagine you want to test how good a car is and the latest car in the market, Mercedes 600 SEL has been launched and a person who does not know how to drive the car, he sits behind the steering wheel and he bangs up the car. Who will you blame? The car or the driver? Who will you blame? The car or the driver? But naturally the driver. If the driver does not know how to drive the car and he bangs up the car, you will not blame the car. If you want to judge how good the car is, you will have to look at the specification of the car. What is its pickup? What are the safety measures? What is the speed? What is the gear ratio? And then you can tell how good the car is. And really, if you want to have a test drive, you put behind the steering wheel an expert driver. Similarly, if you want to observe any Muslim regarding how good Islam is, the best example we have is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't look at me. Don't look at me how good Islam is. Don't look at the other Muslims or what the individual society does. Look at an expert driver or a person who knows how to follow Islam in totality. And that was the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The other strategy used by the media to malign Islam is they quote many verses of the Quran out of context. And one of the most common verses quoted by the critics of Islam is Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5 which says, wherever you find a kafir, you kill him. And if you open the Quran, that verse is there. The translation is there. Wherever you find a kafir, you kill him. But it is out of context. They quote verses of the Quran out of context. They quote hadith out of context. The context is, when we start a few verses before, it's mentioned that there was a peace treaty between the Muslims and the Mushriks of Makkah. And this peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the Mushriks of Makkah. By the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number 5 of Surah Tawbah chapter number 9, He is giving an ultimatum to the Mushriks of Makkah that you put things straight in four months time, otherwise a declaration of war. And in the battlefield, Allah says to the Muslims that don't get scared, fight. Wherever you find the enemy, you kill him. Now any army general, to boost up the morale of his soldiers, he will but naturally say that wherever you find the enemy, you kill him. He will not say that wherever you find the enemy, be killed. So this is in context in the battlefield. In the battlefield, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, wherever you find the kafir, the enemy is attacking you, don't get scared, fight. And kill them wherever you find them. Imagine today if there's a war going on between America and Vietnam and the American president says in the battlefield he is boosting the morale of the American soldiers or the army general of America says that wherever you find a Vietnamese, you kill him. It's in context. But if I quote out of context and say today the American president is saying that wherever you find a Vietnamese, kill him, I will make him sound like a butcher. It is out of context. And Throughout the world, 